Let's ride. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Moto Mission Adventure Podcast. We're telling stories of adventure and, you know, adventurous lives. We have Taco Mike today. I'm pretty excited about this guy. We have, uh, we sat down in his warehouse and his shop and uh, kind of looked at some things that he's doing and kind of heard his voice and his ideas on adventure. He started a business it's called taco moto and it's a really really cool place it's one of my favorite vendors for motorcycle like dual sported motorcycle parts and that sort of things but to hear him think to hear his thoughts on things were fascinating so here's taco mike we're actually in his warehouse and if you hear all of this craziness behind us that is the I guess there's construction there's noise. that's happening. Yeah. So there's roof construction going on. We're next to an airport and then there's a busy road right out here. So there's going to be a lot of background noise. So if you're listening only, that's what we're pointing out and what we're looking at over our shoulders right now. But if you're watching, you are seeing us in the in the taco shop. This is, this is where the magic happens. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is where the sausage gets made. <laughs> this is our place. Um, this so we started out in smaller uh in a smaller place we we worked out of a barn at our house for a year or so and then we had like a um, on our house and our property so we live out in the rural part of town and so we live on a piece of property that had a barn and then an, a little annex building and so we worked out of that for a while and then this is our first big commercial space so we've been here a, a little over a year and it's awesome to be able to have room for lots of bikes and room for lots of stuff so as you walk around and see this this is just that growth experience and now we're we're pushing the walls that we have here. We should have got a bigger, a bigger building and, and we're just going to have to make do with this for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. Um, walking, it's very organized. I mean, you've got a lot going on in here with it, you know, the shelves and everything. It looks like it's all labeled and, 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 and beautiful in here. It's, it's not what I would uh, expect in some places you have it kind of dialed in here. So it may not, does it feel that way for you? I mean, yeah. it looks pretty organized. Yeah, it is organized. My wife is really the motivator behind that. So ah, okay. we, we are a mom and pop operation. Like, to the truest sense. Takamoto is owned by my wife and I, and we run it every day. She's here every day. We work together every day, side by side, all day long. And I know that a lot of couples, you I see your wife here, she's behind the camera. Yeah, and yeah. so for you guys, it clearly works. For some couples, it does. Others, it does not. Um, we love it. We have our son who comes in often. We have a lot of kids who uh, we know from church and scouts and other activities. And so they work here too. And yeah. it's a very fun loose uh environment yeah and it's very and so back to your question or your observation about being organized we um i like to say we take what we do i take what i do very seriously but i don't take myself seriously i got you and so we are very on top of things we're very organized my wife is the real sort of push behind that and we run a really tight ship yeah and we try to do a really good job but we are trying to have as much fun as possible doing it well and that's and, and it that obviously shows and it shows in your products and your business and everything but but that was the thing that got my attention when i walked into the warehouse is wow it's clean it's organized it's awesome but see to me that speaks to ethic like your work ethic and your like the little the little detail sometimes like that's the if you get that right you get everything right i remember like when we were touring with you know rock bands they would have riders you know like technical riders that they would send ahead and riders to send ahead to uh, in advancing and and people would make fun of things like um green m ms you, you've heard the yeah yeah you, sure. you've heard this but people don't know where that comes from and that basically is this like if uh, i was on tour with one band and they had they wanted you to have a uh like a certain newspaper in their dressing room when they arrived which sounds kind of easy like of course that makes sense but that was their little check like if if that person the promoter saw that got that right yeah. paid enough attention then they're probably getting everything else right exactly so that's kind of you know you're you're representing well here so i'm not yeah oh you're so organized you're probably getting these motorcycles dialed in properly too and i know that's what you're all about so i want to talk about we had a conversation when i first got here you're working on bikes oh, and i'm pointing over my shoulder for those that are only listening beautiful gorgeous bikes all lined up behind me right here and uh you were telling me kind of like 
the the business like the the reason you're here um certain models of bikes like you are predicting what's coming down the road in the next couple of years by looking at certain things and you can kind of figure out what parts might be needed you can kind of ramp up with production and tooling and all that sort of thing kind of speak to that just a little bit because all of us in the adventure world are so curious how in the world does this stuff work <laughs> yeah, so what we are about, what Takamoto is about is looking for weaknesses in the stock machine and then trying to find solutions to to improve those bikes. And I guess it goes to what we talked about earlier. W if we were engineers, we're riders, we're enthusiasts, we're passionate about the sport. And so if we worked at a manufacturing company and we were engineers and we were designers and we were making these machines, we're creating these machines, we would try to make as many components out of titanium, aerospace grade materials. We would want these things to be like NASA approved, uh, uh, products, we would we would spare no expense and we would cut no corners. But we have budgets, we have marketing is going to come in, legal is going to come in, all these hands are in the recipe. And so by the time that motorcycle is now produced and sent to the to the dealership, there are hundreds, if not thousands of compromises in terms of weight, and then the materials costs, all of those things are, are impact the final product. So what I'm trying to do is go back to that mindset of we're those original engineers, we're creating this, what would we want to have on there? What parts, components, materials would we want? And that's the mindset that I have. And so when an OEM machine comes out, when a new when a new bike hits the floor, I'm instantly looking at it carefully. Where are those compromises? What are those? And then how can we like create a component, a product or an upfit that not only solves those deficiencies, but then improves beyond that. So that's, that's what I do every day. That's what I'm trying to do, trying to accomplish. Also, because there are so many other good aftermarket partners out there, there's, I'm not the only person in the world doing this. So if I can amalgamate, this is what I think I am. I think I'm a great, um, I, I'm, I'm very observant. And so I'm looking at the motor, I'm carefully observing the motorcycle itself, but then also looking at who else is out there like me doing those things. So if I can basically, I'm a cook, that's all I am is maybe a cook. And so I'm throwing in the best ingredients into this recipe and some of my own, my own creative inputs into this recipe. And so I stir that pot, I throw all these great things in there. I stir that pot at just the right temperature for just the right length. And then ta-da, there it is. That's, that's the, the dish. And then we, I serve that. And if a couple people like it, then that's really the goal that I have is to create that ultimate dish, which is this motorcycles. And so the small area that that I focus in is uh, the uh, for the last couple of years anyway KTM dual sport bikes. So that would be classified as the enduro bike. So you would you would look at that model range as the EXCF, the XCFW. Those are basically motorcycles, dirt bike motorcycles. So half liter class bikes that have a license plate are platable. And uh, they're light adventure. So in our sort of in the catalog of motorcycles, there's heavy adventure. And that would be like the BMW GS 1200 series bikes. That's that's the 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 elephant size machine with all of its capabilities and at the bottom end of that you have maybe like a ktm 350 xcf that's that's at the lightest possible and so there's all kinds of middleweight ultra weight there's just so many different you know breakdowns i focus and live in that ultra light so that 350 450 500 class that's that's where we're operating at yeah that's your sweet spot and uh that's 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 a lot of your products are in that kind of neighborhood right there and uh but you mentioned like you're you're kind of like putting recipes together and kind of serving it up and i will just tell you um among my friends and the people that i talk to in the adventure community and dual sport community we really like the food that you're producing over here thank you <laughs> um i'm the i'm the biggest critic so really i'm trying to make a motorcycle that i like i yeah. want to ride and that works for me mm -hmm. i'm very picky i'm super very high standards when it comes to a motorcycle how it feels how it operates how it sounds all of the the whole dish like i'm a i'm a i feel like i'm maybe that's my talent is i'm a very good taste tester yeah. and and then if i don't like the taste of it to yeah. use this metaphor stretch it further sure then i'm gonna figure out what i need to modify on that recipe to get what i'm after i think that um for me, I, I have basically come to think that if, if I have a new motorcycle and, you know, I, I love KTMs, I've, I've had all, all different types of motorcycles, but I know that if I want to get it right, 
I, this is going to sound like a commercial, but I just know if I, if I want to get it right, I come to you first. Thank I you. look at your website. I go, what's working with Mike and what's he selling? Because you don't sell things that you don't approve of. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think. To, I think that's I think I've even heard you say that. But yeah, yeah. If it if you're selling it, then it's probably going to be good for my needs. And I beat my bikes. I I ride hard, and so knowing there's like a there's like a comfort knowing like okay, if Mike recommended this product, I'm probably okay. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Thank you for noticing that. Thank you for yeah. pointing that out. I work really yeah. hard at that. So when you go on our website and you're looking for uh, I don't know, take a take a shark fin for example, or a sprocket. I don't know. Pick anything. Yeah. If you go to a, a mass merchandiser and you type in a key search for whatever that thing is and you start scrolling there's going to be 10 20 versions of those yep. how do i know if i'm if i'm a hobbyist i'm an enthusiast i work a day job i don't i'm not immersed in these components i don't know what these are i just need seven or eight things to upfit my bike so i can go on this bdr ride um and i don't have time to read the reviews and look at the stars yeah. of all that so what i do when i'm on Takamoto site, what you notice, which you've just pointed out, is if you type in a keyword search for a product, maybe there's only one that pops up. Yeah. Maybe there's two. Yeah. Um, probably only one. And so our sort of guarantee or what I sort of the concept behind that is, is I've already done all the research. I have gone out and I I could show you bins and bins and bins of things in a category. Take a radiator guard, for example. Uh, I have bins of 25 different radiator guards that'll fit a KTM 500. Okay. But we maybe only have, uh, we only have two on our site. And that's because there's only two that I would put on a motorcycle and race in the Baja 1000 or take to Baja eight days in the back country and know that it will not fail or cause me any drama or any hassles or headaches. And so that's all I'm going to put on the site. Yes, there are other products in those other categories. And some of them probably have better profit margins for us. Some of them I might do a better business because they're more widely known. But if it doesn't, if I'm not going to put it on a Baja 1000 bike or take it to the backcountry, I'm not going to bother selling it because I don't want to spend time on the phone apologizing or sending you a return or a replacement. And so we have a very light customer service load because of that. Wow. We spend very little time. It's not zero time, but we spend very, very little time on the phone and on emails working with people with the hassles and headaches because... The, we have this ultra high standard. Yeah. We are we are like elitists. We're prima donnas. We're totally. <laughs> I'm so bougie when it comes to what I put on the website. Yeah, because I don't want to hear those bad stories sure. and those bad experiences. Sure. And the other reason too is I. I, I happily put out my personal cell phone number. It's all over the internet. It's all over the place. And I don't mind hearing from customers when they have legitimate, I'm broke, I have a problem. I, um, let me, let me share this one quick antidote. Uh, I, I've always thought of myself, I'm an empathetic person. I'm very caring and I'm very, uh, I'm very empathetic two people and motorcycling uh, you and i are defective degenerates because and i know this about you because you ride a motorcycle yeah that's all i need to know do you <laughs> ride a motorcycle then you are a degenerate you are a you are a defective person you don't fit in society you don't play well with others you're borderline criminal like just knowing that you ride a motorcycle <laughs> tells me a lot about who you are because i'm that person too and so we who ride motorcycles, men or women, we are in need of, we have to escape our demons. We're yeah. constantly trying to outride and, and outstimulate the voices in our head and the, the troubles that, that we carry deep inside of us. Yeah. And motorcycling does that for us because adventure sports, we put our, you know, at the, the, all, my worries focus down into the next rock and the next turn. Like all of the noise in my head disappears because it's just about this moment. It is for me the most effective way for me to center and focus and zero in on the things that are like critically important to me in my life and to turn everything else off. That's what motorcycle is to me. And I know that's what it is to you and everyone listening who rides motorcycles. If you don't, if you're not that kind of person, then you are doing crossword puzzles or you're, you're a painter or you're something else. But if you ride motorcycles, that's all I need to know about you. And so I 
empath empathize a million percent with our people. I know who our people are. I know us. I know who we are. And I know what our problems are. And, and I can't address our spiritual emotional problems but i can address your bike's problems mm -hmm. because your bike is a better therapist than i am your bike is a better spiritual counselor than i am yeah nature is a better spiritual counselor than than any human and so if i can be your bike's therapist and help you solve a problem get your bike running fix it improve it dial it out get it optimized for you and then you and your bike you go solve your life's problems out in nature and experiencing all that with the brotherhood and community of riding and riders and all of that. If I can be your bike's therapist, then that it that is my mo that's why I wake up in the morning. That's why my cell phone number is out everywhere. That's what I live for. That's what I feel like is my mission and calling in life. And back to so, so to circle back, I don't want to put parts on the website that I have to hear drama stories about. So again, I'm an elitist. I'm bougie about it. Um, and there are people who probably don't use us or shop with us because they can find something on Amazon or eBay. Uh, that's a overseas import part. Most of what we have here, I specifically try. Everything we make, we absolutely try to make it in the USA. We try to make it in Las Vegas. Um, I turn down solicitations all the time from overseas importers who say, we would like to put this on your site, and I'm not interested. Um, I want everything to be at, at that Baja 1000 race grade. Yeah. And um, again, I know that you can get other stuff from other other suppliers, yeah. cheaper, lesser quality. I, I'm aware of that, but we don't want to devalue the the ex the experience on our website or the i don't want to i don't want to lose you as a faithful friend and customer because i sold you something that i know i made a good profit on it but right. it's probably gonna disappoint you yeah because the long the long game for you is that you know dependable loyal loyal customers you know you being dependable with your products loyal loyal customers that's really long yes i want to be you, friends with your bike for and, life and what you're talking about and this is something i wanted to point out like for me like in the back country like i am miles from another human with a heartbeat many days you know m middle of nowhere and oftentimes i'm riding solo which a lot of people don't understand but that's just how my life so whether i'm riding the trans america trail or the you know backcountry discovery route You're out there. whatever I'm, you do a lot of miles I'm, I'm out there yeah so i can't afford um a, a, a faulty part and then a dodgy item a speak sketchy part and it's also a safety thing too you know because if it's yeah i mean people get it you, you if you get stranded out there and the cell phones aren't working your your fun afternoon on the trail could turn into a serious situation pretty fast so that's right once again, that's one of the things that I just want to say for me and my friends, we're thankful to you. <laughs> we are thankful to you. We think that you have, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to get off script here. This is something that we just, I just hosted a ride, uh, the Smoky Mountain 500 ride. And there were, you know, a handful of us guys that were riding that. And I don't know how many times we were pulled over talking about the bikes or talking to someone else. And your name came up. We're like, man, I'm so glad that Mike figured this out whether it was a kickstand or a or a or a uh you know uh, the ecu or whatever we were like oh i'm so glad that he figured this out so that we don't have to <laughs> that's a valid 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 statement and i yeah. hear that often and that continues to re-motivate me yeah. i know that i'm going in the right direction on the right track when i hear something like that yeah because that's all i that's all i want is for people to be out so that's a therapy session so yeah. you basically to restate what you just said yeah is you were out on a therapy session with your buddies right and it worked and the and the thing that didn't if there's you didn't have to worry about drama and breakdowns and mechanical issues so that you could soak in yeah at the highest possible level yeah. the experience and the brotherhood and that and all of that and that's what i that's what i want i want to hear stories of no bike problems no yep. bike dramas no issues and then tell me about the campfires tell me about yep. when your buddy you know looped it out tell yep. tell me about all that stuff don't tell me that you had mechanical problems because yeah. that is that's the easy stuff that's so easy to solve yeah 
I'll do that. Let me solve all those bike problems so yeah. that everything else becomes just upside. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to hear more about your riding experience, like what you uh, like to ride, you know, bikes and areas and parts of the world and that sort of thing, like where that interest kind of, uh, you know, uh, comes from and, and all of that. I want to uh, tell me about your, when you're on a bike, I want to hear about your experience. Okay, that's a great question. So, um, uh, like a lot of us, I started riding when I was young. I think my first bike was an old Husky two-stroke that I traded a pair of snow skis for. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, all of us have like those little janky first bikes. Yeah. And then uh, just bike to bike to bike until here we are today. <laughs> and motorcycling, like I said, it unlocks adrenaline. It unlocks all of the things that my mind needs and and I and I need it in my life. I need to push and challenge myself in those ways. And so I've never been apart from motorcycling for that many years. I did have a period in my life that I went down a really dark path and had a lot of trouble. And when I look back on it, I think there's a correlation. I was not riding. I was not experiencing that. I was not fellowshipping. I was not plugged in. And I think that contributed to some of that. And I have had so many experiences with people people who uh, they they had there's this arc of their life where when they were younger they felt really energized they were doing adventurous things they were experiencing life they were soaking it in and drinking it up but then they went to college they got busy they got married all these things happened and they got away from that and then that's when these clouds start moving in and there's some sort of fall there's some sort of issue that happens there's a calamity and then in the rebuilding they take stock of themselves and they realize I would, they, they do this inventory and they say, when was I happiest in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, it was when I was riding a bike or I was doing adventure sports or I was being adventurous. I was experiencing nature. I was doing it with friends. I had close associations. They start putting all these pieces together. They connect these dots and they, they then revisit back into it. And so I have a big audience of people or, or people who come to me who have that narrative and they say well i'm 45 and i this is going to be my first bike in 20 years yeah yeah and i need this Pl and, and again to what i mentioned earlier i don't want to be your therapist yeah i know you have problems we all uh, <laughs> and i know they're deep and heavy i can't solve those but let's talk about your bike yeah and let me help you with your bike let's let's work through that together and then and then send me pictures and tell me stories after that so my experience in motor was, so i didn't really answer your question i like to ride in baja i like to ride in the west i like to ride in the mountains mm -hmm. and i like these smaller bikes I have a big, a bigger bike. It's an intermediate bike. It's the KTM 790 over there, which I enjoy. Um, but I will pick this Beta 500 or any of these KTM 450, 350, 500s as my first choice every time. Yeah, sure, sure. I think that uh, motorcycles come, become somewhat of a, of a catalyst or an environment for the things that you just spoke about. Things that I'm hearing you say and things that I continue to hear other people say are things like community and solitude. They, they're, they're, they're different, but they, they provide benefits. I think that we're all created or wired for adventure, but it's expressed in different ways. And for a certain group of people, as you called us earlier, the borderline criminals, the, it's the, the, you know, we're the weirdos who need this kind of high octane adrenaline, I guess, to experience that adventure. You talked about this, like having, um, when you're, when you're on a bike, you're processing so much data as you're riding, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening. And because of that, a lot of the kind of problems of the world and the stresses and all that just kind of fade away pretty quickly. Um, I just love that that's a part uh, of this, that we get to have this, you know, uh, a lot of people just don't even know about it. So I'm, you mentioned the 45 year old guy, the, 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 the you've you've met a lot of the 45 year old guys who are like hey i haven't ridden in 20 20 years and they and they, and they kind of re-experience it they get, kind of get reunited with the with the off-road and you've seen these guys kind of come alive personally and i just had a few of these stories where i'm seeing guys who just that they're 45 or 50 years old and they they just 
you know, they're, they're in the grind, they're working nine to five and life is hard. And they're just like, man, I need something. And I don't know. I just think it's awesome to see them get on a bike and start learning and start getting that, you know, that whatever that is that motorcycles provide us out in nature and just kind of fill up. There's like this, this big inhale, this big, you know, they get filled up. So, um, you've you've seen that firsthand you and your mission i'll I'll restate what you said your mission is you know you don't want to be a person's therapist but you'll you'll make sure that bike is ready for them and then that you know is a is a bit of a creates an environment for them to go and and experience adventure and deal with things um you mentioned a couple of times there's almost like a spiritual component to some of that when you get out in nature you get to see like creation and see all these things and um i've talked to a lot of people even lately who as they're riding out in nature they just kind of have like this this focus or this re um the refocus or an understanding that they're because of nature like there's something bigger than ourselves and purpose is more than just making money um if they think of things of god and faith and those kinds of things would you like to speak to any of that yeah so to dive back as you were commenting there i had a couple of quick thoughts one is regarding who who motorcycles are who attra- motorcycles attract who yeah if it was 150 years ago our motorcycle buddies, you and me and all our friends, we would be fur trappers, we'd be adventurers, we would be ranchers, uh, uh, gold miners, yeah. we'd be loners, desperados, we'd probably be horse rustlers. <laughs> we would be attracted to those those uh, non-traditional lifestyle choices because that's who we are. Yeah. We'd probably be criminals, we'd probably be locked up, like that's who we are. <laughs> And it's just, it's inescapable. Yeah. And uh, trying to escape it or trying to fit, this is, this is the disease, dis-ease that affects me and, and all of us, and you kind of alluded to this, I am not wired to live a fluorescent lit lifestyle. That's not who I am. That is not a part of my DNA. And so, I become, ag- I, get, I get twitchy. The more box kept I am in a, in a, ca- in a smooth plaster painted cage <laughs> with a door that opens i forget that all the time but i'm tr- i'm jailed in this very carpeted fluorescent lit prison of my own creation of my own design i chose it i make it i go i willingly go into it every day uh, it has ill effects it has it just dis- it's disruptive it it has so many uh ill effects that it's in the compound and i don't realize it and i don't see that i am um, irritated and agitated and all of these 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 things are happening inside of me and i don't notice it i can't put two and two together but then i go out and i experience even a day or two days or whatever in nature and this is why our our ancestors were fur trappers this is why this is who we are we would ditch it if we had the chance we would cut all of this off and and ditch it and escape and we would we would go to where we're drawn. I believe I am drawn to that because there is a power and a force and a, and a, and a healing energy to being outside and experiencing all that. And I need that. I want that, but I don't, I don't prioritize that or I don't value that or I don't recognize that. Mm. So I do, you do, there's some of us that do, and we can be these little, we'll just whistle. We'll, and, and this is what I think Instagram and the social media. So there's, there's people who will down, play the social medias and i think there's a lot of valid reasons to do that but i am very we are very active on the socials we're incredibly active on there because what i want to do again i don't want to be your therapist but i want to lead out so i'm going to blow i'm going to toot the little the little whistle horn you know that analogy of like the the follow along i this i I will fly the flag and then if you want to follow behind because you see that i'm leading out so i want to lead out I want to show you that adventure is important, that being outside is important. In fact, one of the little taglines I say all the time is go out and get some adventure. So I know how critically important that is. And I just want to, I want to facilitate that as much as I possibly can and model that as much as I can. And that spiritual component is woven into all of this. I believe that everything I'm trying to do has this deeper meaning to it. You don't have to see that. You don't have to, it's like gravity. You don't have to know it's there and it exists. It's, you can't escape it. It's just, it just is. 
uh, and I think that there's this spiritual part of what I'm doing, what we're trying to do, and, and motorcycling and being outside. You don't have to recognize, you don't have to acknowledge it, you don't even have to, you don't have to say the the words of it, but it's there, it's real, and it's happening. And when you plug into it, um, you, you feel it and you know it. That's good. Um, it makes me think, and and also just listening to listening to you, it it, it inspires me, and it, it it makes me want more of that because uh, I think that even though I do this for a living, I ride and I'm all over the world riding, and I get to see so many things. I still crave more, and all the things that you're talking about, like it makes my heart beat. I'm like, yes, yes, I'm over here just like you know like ready itching to go you know it's like yes that's what i want i want more of that what you're saying because i think that we've been locked into you mentioned the word cage so many of us have locked been metaphorically locked into some sort of cage and it could just be like our own in, in our mind you know like we're in jails in our mind that we've created and uh just getting out it doesn't have to be on a motorcycle i'll point that out it doesn't have to that's be a valid point but for us we chose motorcycling. We chose that. Uh, but you could choose hiking or a a camping, uh, taking your kids out fishing. There's a hundred thousand ways to go and experience the same thing, same fellowship brotherhood with your family, with your friends, yeah. with your brothers. I use, I'm a guy, so I only know, I can only speak to guys. I know women plug into this too, but, yeah. but being a man is all I know. Yeah. And so I just speak to that, but but dudes getting together and playing darts, shooting pool, um, th I, that's, that's the other component maybe that I haven't quite tied together. But like, I think you need the, va there is value in doing this activity with other guys, yeah. other dudes. Yeah. When you combine all of that with location, yeah. it, there is a power and a magic there that is not felt or experienced in any other way. It's, you can't replace it. You can't play a video game. You can't take a drug. You can't go to a strip joint. You can't do anything. Nothing will, it's, they're all masking it. They're all, they all want, they're j jingling and they're like, oh, I'm exciting and cool and this will do it for you. I'm here to tell you I've experienced a ton of that stuff and it's all, it doesn't, it doesn't play out. Being, doing, doing life, being adventurous in nature with something sketchy and scary and dangerous, pushing all that together, combining in that recipe pot, putting all that together, that's real, that's legit, that is soul saving and that's you know you're you're vibing you know exactly <laughs> what i'm talking about well and and i'm over here smiling and laughing because you said exactly what i was about to say and uh you can't get those things that you just described from playing a video game or watching tv alone you kind of the recipe i'm, I'm going to stick with this the recipe you're talking about community. That's that's the, the the bottom line is you with other people that are like minded and being in that scenario where you are scared, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Scared. Yeah. Because sometimes you do something, you go down a hill or go up a hill or whatever. It's like uh, that makes me scared. That makes me nervous. And to have that part of you, it, there's a human element where you go, dude, if this doesn't go well, I'm in trouble or I'm dead. You're right. There's, there's that element to kind of, and, and that forces me to think of more than just the natural and more than just our life here on earth. It forces me to think about all the other things. Um, and then to do that with other people that are like-minded and community around a campfire and night and telling stories like, Dude, that is life. That's it. A million percent. If we were cavemen, we would be... So, well, this is... I love the concept that we create a tribe within a tribe. So, if we were cavemen, what we would do firstly is we would make sure we were in a safe valley. We had food that our elderly and our children and anyone who looks to us and relies on us, that if they were safe and secure, then we would become a tribe within our tribe. The men, we would leave and we would go out and we would have an adventure and some of us are going to get an arm bitten off by a bobcat and some of us are going to get struck by lightning and some of us are going to fall down a hill and we're going to have all of those and we're gonna and we it, that's in our dna yeah that's in our dna yeah. it's inescapable and trying to pretend it's not means that we're drinking and drugging and strip clubbing and we're doing all those things because we we know there's something inside of us that's 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 unsettled and we're we're looking at those things and that's false yeah um and but when we are together as brothers and we are doing those stupid sketchy things and we're sitting around a campfire sharpening our our arrowheads and cooking a 
you know, our we we strangled a deer and then we cut it up and we're cooking it up over the fire with a stick, you know, metaphorically speaking. That is, we're plugging into who we are as men. We're plugging into who we are as as cre as, as as humans, and that's real and that's legit. And so that's what I'm. That's what I'm advertising. I'm advertising. Do that. Do it on a motorcycle if you choose, but otherwise, do it some way. I happen to like motorcycling, and that is that is what I'm hoping that our back to social media. That's what I'm hoping, and I follow you too, and I see you doing it too. And so you're in, you're the same. We're the same. We are trying to 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 share this joy and this purpose and this reality with as many people who want to listen and. The people who hear us, it resonates with us. They're our people. They're our yeah. tribe. We're yeah. tribesmen. So we're just sort of calling our tribe together. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic to sit and hang and kind of dig into you and, and hear kind of what makes you tick. Um, and I feel like you've already answered this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, I, I feel like we've, we, we're in territory right now that both of us kind of come alive with. But some of our listeners, um, some ride, some don't, some are outdoors people and some aren't, some people just like to watch, you know, because, uh, they're limited for whatever reason, but whoever they are, I want to give you like last words. What would you say to the listeners as a whole, or maybe pick one person out and just kind of speak to them? Like, what's the, what would you say? What, how would we wrap this up with one uh, kind of final you know, final thought. So we're sitting in front of a lot of valuable motorcycles and you don't need uh, equipment like this. You don't need anything sophisticated whatsoever to go and experience what we're talking about. Uh, so the guy who I am thinking about, he's, he's 40 or 50, he's 30, 40, 50, 60. He has done, so he's checked off a lot of those boxes. He looks at his resume, his CV, and he's done all the things. And yet he is shallow and hollow and empty and, and he knows it and everyone around him knows it. His kids think he's kind of a jerk. Uh, he's kind of an ass, a low, he's got this low grade, you know, uh, low grade jerk vibe uh -huh. and he doesn't like it. And the people around him don't like it. And he's just not fulfilled. He's not happy. He doesn't, he doesn't, he, he's not who he really, when he was 18 or 19 or 20, he's not who he thought he would turn out to be. And I think that if he does a personal inventory, he realizes he is not everything we just talked about. Lack, lack, lack. There's just a ton of lack. And so I would suggest that, that guy uh, start. He looks back in his time machine. When was he really plugged in? When did he feel alive? He There was a time. And it was probably when he was feeling foolish with his friends doing foolish things being outside um experiencing the joys of being alive being in touch in that way and i think that you don't need any valuable you don't need anything to be able to do that you just need one or two guys and you need to go fishing you need a campfire you need to like that guy needs to figure out who his cave person is and what that cave person did and how he survived so go out with two or three dudes make a campfire kill something and eat it yeah. or bring something <laughs> bring bring some meat cook it yeah in real time smell that feel the heat of that with your dudes, you're just going to talk about the things that are going on in your head, the things that are bothering you. Experience that for like one night. That right there is all you need. That's going to cost 50 bucks wow. and a little bit of gas. And, and that's how it starts. And it can just go from there. And email me if you have suggestions uh, you'd like to add to what I said or email me if you think that you need some of that. I am happy to talk to you. I am happy to, you have my cell phone number. You can put this in the show notes. I am happy to talk to anybody or help anybody at any time with all of this. That's unbelievable. It's amazing. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the, the Takamoto uh, Instagram. It's at Takamoto. I think, yeah, you just, <laughs> you'll find it. Yeah. It's, it's out there. Takamoto, just it. type that and it'll, and it pop up. In <laughs> right. Um, man, that's awesome. I really enjoyed hanging out with you today and, uh, and, and, and now it's getting quiet in here. So yeah, now we're done. And yeah, that's probably taking a break. Perfect. Perfect. I think they're out there just messing with us. Thanks. They were like, Hey, those guys got the I microphones. Saw the microphones. So thanks to everyone. <laughs> 
Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. I thoroughly have uh, en- enjoyed hanging out with, with Mike here at Taco. And uh, let's go eat some tacos. Brock, thank you. Yes, sir, man. Great to meet you and your wife. And I uh, appreciate what you're doing. And you should plug yourself. You will. This guy's got some really cool stuff, too. I've watched your videos. You have you just came back from Ireland. He does a lot of writing. He does a lot of venturing. So he's he's not... He's not, we're not advocating anything that we don't do ourselves uh, and a lot of, and that's why I believe I'm alive and not in some other state because of adventuring, because of motorcycles, because of fellowship. I don't, I, I've heard you and I've listened to a few things about you and I think you would agree you seem to be nodding your head. So yeah. if there's one thing that together we know, and that is, is that what we, what we're saying, what we're talking about is, is legit and it's part of. It's part of what I need in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of other guys and girls uh, would agree with us too that are listening right now. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. There's a lot more adventure coming. Go out and get some adventure. That's right. (laughs) 